fuck? I'm Kate Shimaroni, natural nurse in the toxic world and co-founder of the British Nursing Alliance. Now, I've been a trained and qualified nurse for many no, years. No, I began my nursing no. 36 years ago. I'm also a trained and qualified rum. independent oh. nurse prescriber and I have a diploma in... I am the Sarcastic Bomb and welcome to the channel and yes someone seems to have appeared out the woodwork posting on social media once again. It's our lovely favourite Kate Shimonari. Oh joy of joys. The person who's probably got me some of the most views on my channel, some of the most horrible um, comments and the most downvotes. <laughs> of course we're going to look at her again with her nursing alliance. Oh why do I do this to myself? Oh, I didn't think there was enough booze in the world to cover this again. But hey, at least she's as stupid as a flat earther. So, let's see what she's going to say, shall we? I'm Kate Shimarani, natural nurse in the toxic world and co-founder of the British Nursing Alliance. Now, for anyone new to the channel, I suppose we better have a little... Uh, Back history about Kate Shimonari and explain who the fuck she is. Oh, Kate Shimonari is a crazy anti-vax nurse lady who believes that COVID-19 isn't real. Vaccines are ki what is really killing people along with 5G. Any person who's giving a vaccine she equates to being Nazis. She has shown anti-Semitic views. Um, and basically before all the pandemic and things she ran a beauty salon injecting Botox into people's faces but thinks that vaccines are bad for us and no vaccine has ever proven effective and no vaccine has ever saved anyone in the entire world. Oh, she hangs about with Mark Steele. Even David Icke thinks she's crazy and her son has appeared on TV to give her an interview about her where, oh, how to put it politely, even he thinks, and this is paraphrasing, he doesn't say this, she's batshit fucking crazy and deep down the rabbit hole, halfway to Narnia, lost in the Wizard of Oz's butthole. So, yeah, that's what we're dealing with today. And the entire reason that she seems to be doing this British Nursing Alliance is because um, she was kicked off the register here in the UK for spouting all these crazy sort of theories and shit. Um, she has appeared on Sky News spouting all the crazy conspiracy stuff again. And once again, with all crazy conspiracy people, had nothing to back it up apart from the fact she was batshit crazy. And I think anyone watching this who's familiar with Kate Shimonari will find that I'm probably being polite on her on her level of batshittery. So... Yeah, that's what we're dealing with today. Oh, there's not enough beer in the world. Now, I've been a trained and qualified nurse for many years. I began my nurse training 36 years ago. I'm also a trained and qualified independent nurse prescriber, and I have a diploma in personal nutrition. That's lovely. Let's not forget the bit where you stop being a nurse to go and do... Uh, air hostessing and then still weren't a nurse and then opened a beauty salon where you um, still weren't a nurse. So um, yeah, and even if you had been practicing all that time as being a nurse and kept up with your training and everything like that, that wouldn't give you the right to make the sort of quote where, let's get this exactly right, shall we? There is no evidence that SARS-CoV-2 has been purified and is unequivocally in existence. So if you want to just deny that the virus is there, whoop de doo But you're still not providing any evidence and I don't think you're qualified to provide the evidence to go with it. So, um, sucks to be you, really. What changed my absolute vocation, if you like, about nursing was when I was diagnosed in 2012 with a very aggressive and deadly breast cancer. Now, no matter what people may think, I'm not a complete and utter asshole and will be skipping the small section about cancer. She basically just talks about her cancer, about having it removed and treatments and things to follow. And that then she had some alternative treatments to help with her survival rate. What I will take the piss of, though, quite happily, is those alternative measures, which were um, 
coffee enemas. I mean, I will say that's got to be a great way to wake up in the morning and put some buzz in your step. I just hope the coffee wasn't hot when it went in there. Ooh, different kind of ring sting that, innit? Now, we are told that the NHS is the envy of the world. In fact, no other country emulates the NHS. The fucker ducker what? <laughs> the NHS is the envy of who? People in America who can't afford healthcare because that's the only people I think would envy it that much. I mean, let's have a look at who has universal healthcare like the NHS. Yeah, there's just a few countries that have got universal healthcare. So, um, yeah, maybe not make that equation that no one else sort of does that shit. And if you want to say, oh, no country copies the NHS exactly, though, I'm not surprised. It's so badly fucking run and the wait times are a pain in the ass because it's been mismanaged over the last probably, what, 30-odd fucking years, if not longer. Doesn't mean it doesn't work most of the time. And it also doesn't mean that other countries don't have national sort of health service things going on. I thought I'd have a quick look at a couple of the countries and Brazil was definitely my favourite. Because it doesn't matter if you are from Brazil or if you are having a visa for Brazil or just anything. If you are in Brazil and you are ill, it is free healthcare, surgeries, prescriptions, the whole goddamn works, no matter what. Which I think is damn fucking cool, because I thought, well, South American country, the amount of crap they've been through up and down over the last 50 odd years with bloody military regimes and coups and things like that. I mean, I thought Brazil might be a bit, slight bit of an outlier, but uh, yeah, it's all fucking good. So um, yeah, basically the NHS just needs remanaging, new hotels building, more fucking staff. And did I mention re-fucking managing? And if we look at the survival rates and the waiting times, we fare in the lowest third in the world. Wow, lower third. I don't know why, but that seems a bit low, even for something you to come out with. And uh, your relationship with the truth, it's not the best, is it? You're on that bit of rocky ground. I mean, you've been to counselling and everything like that. You've tried all the different things. Toys in the bedrooms, the works. But I think truth just turned around and said to you, start seeing other people. And you have. And unfortunately, it's led you down this path. So, yeah. So I thought we'd have a look at cancer survival rates. So we looked at the Concord 3 report, which is the most recent report I could seem to find. Because it was cancer survival rates so far for 2022. Yes, a bit awkward. We're only like a month in. So shit goes on. But very fitting because only a month in and the last month or so has been plagued by still COVID, delayed appointments and shite like that. Hopefully acting in your favour, bringing down results because the last year or so has been um, poop for getting appointments and things at the doctors and catching cancer quickly. And that is the most important thing really with cancer. So the Concord 3 report looked at 71 countries and territories and then published a list of 64 countries. Um, the lowest percentage in that being about 25% survival rate for cancer and the highest being 63%, which was for Japan. Now, the UK, unfortunately for you, didn't come in the lower third of that. We actually came roughly in the middle, so in the second third. So, again, not really fitting for you. We had a survival rate of about 48%. Um, we were one of the worst countries performing in Europe, but not the worst, so at least... That is a slight bonus. But yeah, cancer is a pain in the ass. But you lying about figures is more of a pain in the ass. Now I will ask if anyone knows what figures she actually used and wants to give me more information, because obviously this video didn't contain any information, I will have a look at it. And then if it turns out we are in the lower third, I'll put my hands up. But if not, I'll just put a finger up to her like that. Now, let's see what else you're going to bollocks up about. This sacred cow that is the NHS that no one must criticise. And now we're being told that our national insurance contributions are going to be increased towards it. The what do what now? Sacred cow NHS. Right, okay. 
Um, I'm not sure what planet you live on, but everyone criticises the NHS. Everyone criticises how it's been run. Everyone criticises the health secretary all the fucking time. So, no. NHS gets fucking bitched at shed loads. And, uh, yes, the NHS national insurance contributions are going up. It's going to be a fixing law that the money has to go towards certain projects and things like that, all involved in basically looking after people. It's a 1.25% increase. So, yeah. And hopefully, probably won't because it's so misfucking managed this video is just going to end up me mitching and moaning about the NHS. Um, yeah, hopefully is going to help solve some of the problems that are uh, currently plaguing the NHS that needs serious re-fucking managing. Um, so yeah, we can bitch about the NHS. Look, here I am, bitching about the NHS. Everything is being increased in this country, but healthcare appears to be being scaled back. You've just pointed out that national insurance is going up and then you're saying that healthcare... <sighs> Who writes your shit? They need a slap. Now, if you were to read the 2021-22 mandate signed by Matt Hancock for the NHS, it's, it's very revealing. Yeah, we've got that. I'll include the link for this one as well down below. So if anyone wants to read along with any points she's making, pause the video now, download it. It's only 21 pages. And then you can compare any bits and things and claims she makes in regards to, obviously, healthcare being cut back. Um... Okay, so yeah, let's, let's see where this goes. They're going to be having 50,000 more nurses, but they're not stating whether they're going to be on zero hours contracts. Yep, 50,000 new nurses they're hoping to have. Well, I say new, it's a bit of a hmm, moment there. Now, in the report itself, it doesn't say where these nurses are going to come from, what they're going to be paid or anything like that. But luckily... In the actual manifesto, it does contain a bit more information. They're only actually looking to recruit an extra 31,500 nurses. This being made up of a mixture of new recruits, bursaries, apprenticeships, and just the general sort of let's get people into nursing initiatives that we've come to see in general sort of life. The other 18,500 are for people who are looking to retire or move professions. They basically want to keep them within the NHS. So whether that means stopping them going to private healthcare or anything like that, or, as you mentioned, zero-hour contracts, letting them have a zero-hour bank contract where they can go and work in another hospital privately, but then be available for, say, helping at a surgery as a senior technician in a surgery thing. Well, Bob, yeah, those words really got away from me there. How oh, well it's staying in, because I don't care. Next point. They also say there's going to be 50 million more appointments. Why do we need 50 million more appointments? Are we going to be getting sicker? Now, you know how we did some moaning before about the NHS? Hey, guess what? We're going to do some more. And it's about wait times. And yes, the NHS has some pain in the ass wait times. Whether this be for consultancies, for people who need knees, hips, cancer referrals, or anything like that at all. And the one thing that would help with that would be more appointments. Now, the full line of the thing is 50 million more appointments at general practitioners per year. So, yeah, your local doctor, go down, go to your GP, get an appointment. So you can start on the track early for getting things hopefully fixed in you. This could mean that a cancer survival rate could go up. Yay! None of this so far, though, sounds like cutting back on healthcare. They're building 40 more hospitals. Why? Now, I could sort of rehash the last point made about wanting more appointments and things like that, and that being the need for, well, 40 new hostels. But unfortunately, it's not as simple as that with the 40 new hostels. They're not all new. Um... <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit awkward. Uh, some of the hospitals are replacing other hostels built at different locations to build a new hostel, knock down the old hostel. There we go. Uh, one of the hospitals that I was looking through on the list is actually replacing three hospitals. So, uh, yeah, that doesn't really fit very well. It's like, oh, shit, we're knocking down three to build one. Hmm. The idea being that it brings all three of the services offered at those hostels to one nice central location with nice state-of-the-art facilities, with plenty of doctors and nursing staff in there, nice big wards, so it can do everything the three hospitals could do, but at a cheaper price, because make the most of the money that they can, really. So, yeah, we're not getting sicker, they're just 
building new state-of-the-art hospitals because we haven't built many hospitals recently like we probably should have been keeping up with building hospitals and keeping our hospitals up to date. They're going to be using the latest technology, AI, and they're going to be using genome sequencing. Ask yourself how much money is being pumped in to avoid disease or even reverse disease. Because the one thing I learned almost a decade ago was you are what you eat. Today's food becomes tomorrow's cells and no amount of exercise or prescription medication is an offset for a poor diet. Yes, no, maybe, a little bit. Now diet is important and you can't say that it's not. If you constantly, constantly eat crap, you're not getting the right vitamins and things like that, your body's not going to be the healthiest. Now I may look like a big fat pie and I blame the beer for that because I do like a big plate full of veg. Stick me a punnet of grapes in front of me, I will numb the whole thing. If I'm in the mood for an apple, I won't stop at one because I like food. We don't often have takeaways in our house. We will have a nice home-cooked meal. It's just my portions are probably bad. I mean, a roast chicken will last us two, three days, but um, a sack of potatoes and a load of veg doesn't last us that long. There's only me and the wife. But we do eat quite healthily. Hence why I don't really get ill. So if you're one of those nurses who's just had a stay of execution because you declined this experimental, untested, unlicensed, uninsured injection that is bioengineering. Wow. Ho, ho, ho. There comes the crazy conspiracy stuff. See, see, I did warn you at the start of this video how fucking crazy she is. Experimental. No, no, it's past trials. As for mRNA stuff itself, we've been like messing about and discovered mRNA since the 60s. There have been other mRNA, MN, M, yeah, yeah, that one. There have been other, other vaccine trials for that, which are still going on for other viruses. This wasn't the first one ever made. The fact you don't know this or don't understand about this or just want to lie about this is fucking infuriating and just shows why you got kicked off the f fucking nurse's register. Why that even David Icke thinks you're a fucking nut job. Jesus Christ. No. I hope the next one's not as crazy as this because because this is my last beer. And you think that your job is secure. Listen very carefully to what Sajid Javid said. He said he was going to be speaking to the regulators. Who are the regulators? The Nursing and Midwifery Council, taken over by the government in 2001. Oh no, the Nurses and Midwifery Council was taken over by the government. <gasps> you don't like the Nurses and Midwifery Council, do you? Because they kicked you off for being a nut job. Anyway, yeah, that council that's made up of like six nurses and six not nurses. And uh, yes, does have some oversight by the Health Committee. It also has oversight by a charity organisation up in Scotland. So, um... <laughs> Does that mean that the charity is running the committee or is it just oversight? If you're not sure about what the oversight means, you can actually go to the Nurses Midwifery Council and look at the meetings and take look at the full reports given and any recommendations because that's all they can do is give recommendations. They can't say, no, we're putting an MP on the board and we're doing that. There is an ex-MP on the board of the six people who aren't nurses. He was knighted. It's quite cool. He did a lot of work with NATO. Um, but yeah, there's no serving MPs there. There's no general correspondence between the lot of them. It's just you don't like them. The NHS was also taken over by the government at the beginning of this pandemic. So if they're going to be speaking to the regulators, does that mean that you're not going to be able to re-register every year or revalidate every three years unless you've had all of these boosters that they're now bringing. What, you mean the vaccinations like you have to have to become a nurse anyway? So, um, <laughs> is it just not going to be another one added to the list of requirements even to go to college to train to be a nurse? I mean, here's one college's list of things you need. Oh, dear. Whatever will you do? If you really truly want to learn how to reverse disease and avoid disease, then this is for you. 
We are going to empower you so much so that you will have no need for the hospitals, no need for these prescription drugs, and you can start decreasing them and you will see vitality return to the body. Our NHS was never built to take the amount of chronic disease that's there. It was built so that we could go there should we need it and be made well and then get out and continue our lives. But now what we see is all of the degenerative diseases, colitis, Crohn's, diabetes, cancer, uh, Alzheimer's, dementia, but to name a few, all of these are completely avoidable and many of them, if caught early enough, are completely reversible. Really now, I'd, I'd love to see evidence and papers for claims on all of those things, because I don't think so. Some of the things could be genetic, in which case, tough shities for that. Some could be caused by side effects from viruses that have made you unwell in the past. So uh, again, not really going to help if it's already in your body. Oh, but then I'm sure I've seen somewhere you don't believe in viruses at all, so that's a fun one for you. I think the only people you're going to attract with this new, this new British Medical council -y whatever you're calling it, which website was on her videos, is based in Australia. Oh, we should really take a piss out the little things. But the fact you've got an Australian domain name and then your just email is the company thing at mail.com surely shows how unprofessional it actually is. Because anyone wanting to put across a sort of professional point of view, it should be mail at nursey whatever Kate Shiminari's bumhole.com or info at Kate Shiminari's bumhole.com. If the people you're working in are just working on a mail.com and using an Australian fucking website, it just shows what? You're too cheap to buy a .co.uk one? The actual fucking fuck... Or a .org one would have been better. Simple things that you can't get right. Fucking things that you've lied about over the last several years... The rallies you've been at basically inciting fucking violence. It's been covered on my channel and many others. Mohammed Shadiq had some great stuff about you and the shite you got up to. You're a disgusting individual who is fucking nutbag crazy. Oh, I think we've been quite polite, really, on this video as a whole. But, uh, yeah, back to Flat Earth next week. We need to finish off the maps and the mud flood. Because hopefully next week he's going to get to the mud flood bit. Because I can't deal with any more god damn maps. Jesus. Right, I'm going to go and finish watching a Toon Debate. And I'm going to leave you with all of this. We'll see you on the next one. Don't forget shitting on uh, Matt every Tuesday at 8pm, which I keep missing the premieres for. And videos on Thursday, every Thursday at 10pm, all being well. Any suggestions, anything like that, leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe for anything else. Thank you all to members, patrons, everyone who makes these videos possible. And that includes everyone who just likes and comments and all that shite. See you on the next one. Good night.